the menstrual cycle. So the menstrual cycle is a cyclical event that happens in female's body. On average, it takes about 28 days. But this is on average. It can be longer or shorter depending on several factors in women. The cycle is divided into four phases according to the activities that happen in these phases and they go in order. Now our first phase is menstruation. This is followed by the follicular phase. The third phase is ovulation. And lastly, we have the luteal phase. Now let us discuss what happens in menstruation. Now in menstruation, you're going to have flow or discharge of menses, pause. Now with the menstrual cycle, this is a cycle that is based on gamete production in women. Simply it involves the release of an egg and then follow, uh, following that, the preparation of the female's body for implantation and possible pregnancy. Now, before menstruation happens, what occurs is that your body prepares for implantation. Now, it does so in several ways. One way in which it does so is that it thickens the inner lining of the uterus. This is known as the endometrium. So, the endometrium becomes thicker in preparation for implantation. Now, when fertilization does not take place, what happens is that the endometrium is broken down so this tissue is broken down and shed off from our body this is what comes out as menses so essentially menses is a mix of tissue debris blood and mucus now this is menstruation moving on immediately after menstruation our body enters into the second phase and that is the follicular phase now the pituitary gland secretes a hormone called follicle stimulating hormone also um, simplified or acronymed into FSH. So the follicle stimulating hormone has two functions and both of these are targeted at the ovary. So the activities that are initiated or that are stimulated by the follicle stimulating hormone occur within the ovary. Now, number one is follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the development of the graphian follicles. Now, graphene follicles are a layer of cells that surround the egg cells. They provide the necessary nourishment to the egg cells. Now, every menstrual cycle, a single egg is usually released. Now, for the egg to be released, the graphene follicles need to develop first. So, this is where the FSH comes in. So, the follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the graphene follicles to start to develop. Another function of uh, FSH is that it also stimulates the ovary to secrete another hormone. And this hormone is estrogen. Now I know out of the, all the hormones that are there, estrogen is probably the most popular one when it comes to us humans. So estrogen is produced by the ovary under the stimulation of the follicle stimulating hormone. Now what happens after the secretion of estrogen? Estrogen gets to work of course. Now estrogen itself has two functions. Function number one is that it stimulates the repair and healing of the endometrium. Pause. In case you are asking yourself, okay, what is the endometrium? The endometrium is simply the inner lining of the uterus. Remember before menstruation what happens is that the endometrium was uh, broken down and discharged. Now your body immediately after menstruation goes into another hopeful session. Maybe this time we'll have, we'll have fertilization taking place. So let's prepare for it. So what happens is that after menses, your body starts preparing for implantation. So estrogen is there. It repairs, it stimulates the repair and healing of the endometrium. Now estrogen continues to accumulate. So it continues to be secreted by the ovaries. And once it reaches a certain concentration, it stimulates the pituitary gland to release another hormone and that is the luteinizing hormone. Now, in case you're wondering, ooh, so many hormones. And yes, remember hormones are the chemical messengers in our body. If the brain wants a certain process to take place, then the hormones are the ones that are sent to trigger the organ or the tissue to do so. So what happens is that when estrogen accumulates to certain levels, it stimulates the pituitary gland to start secretion of luteinizing hormone. Now the pituitary gland is actually a part of the brain that is responsible for secretion of hormones. So we've already mentioned two hormones that are secreted by the pituitary gland, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Now what does the luteinizing hormone do? It takes up where the follicle stimulating hormone stopped. Remember, one of the functions of the follicle stimulating hormone was 
It stimulated the development of the graphene follicles, luteinizing hormone takes it a bit further. Now, it stimulates the maturation of the graphene follicles. So the graphene follicles mature, and once mature, they burst open. And when they burst open, ladies and gentlemen, what do they release? What do they release? Yes, you are right. They release the egg cell, the commit. Now, this is what is termed as ovulation. So we are in our third phase, ovulation. Now, another thing about the luteinizing hormone is that it also has another function. Now, coming back to the graphene follicles, the layer of cells surrounding the egg cell. So once the egg cell has been, you know, has, what word am I looking for, guys? Has been released. Once the egg cell has been released, it then moves into the oviduct, also known as the fallopian tube. Whatever remains forms a structure known as the corpus luteum. Now, in case you're wondering, hmm, will this structure have a function too? Yes, yes. Nothing is left to waste. So the corpus luteum also has a function. Now it starts secreting progesterone. Now progesterone is a hormone that is very, very important. So progesterone stimulates the thickening of the endometrium in preparation for implantation. So progesterone stimulates the thickening of the endometrium and increases the blood supply at the endometrium. Now if fertilization does take place, then what happens is that progesterone continuously is secreted until birth. Now, progesterone is very important because it maintains pregnancy. Now, progesterone also inhibits follicle-stimulating hormone. So, it, pre it uh, prevents the follicle-stimulating hormone from uh, performing its function. And if you're asking what function is that? Remember, the follicle-stimulating hormone is the one that triggers the whole of this. It's the one that actually starts to trigger ovulation because it stimulates the development of the graphene follicle which finally leads to the release of the egg cell into the oviduct now if follicle stimulating hormone cannot function then that means that ovulation will not take place which is a good thing by the way which is what happens have you ever had a case of a woman who is pregnant and then along the way releases an egg cell which also happens to be fertilized and okay I, I, I've already confused myself. In, in that case, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Now, my point is this. If there is implantation, progesterone continues to be produced. So along the pregnancy, the concentration of progesterone continuously increases. So this maintains pregnancy and also inhibits the functioning of the follicle stimulating hormone. But if fertilization does not take place, then what happens is that the corpus luteum breaks down and progesterone is no longer secreted so the concentration of progesterone drops and what happens is we enter the first phase which is menstruation so we ha this happens again and again until a woman hits menopause and that ladies and gentlemen brings us to the end of this wonderful lesson see you next time